we won't see people, right? We'll just see their questions. Yep. Great. Hi, everyone, um, and welcome to our MIT LGO engineering webinar. My name is Pam Searle, and I'm a member of the LGO admissions team. I'm joined today by my colleague Sharona Bollinger and three of our current LGO students. Um, I'll first start by giving some general information about the LGO program and the specific engineering disciplines, and then we'll hear from our current students. And finally, we'll save time at the end for Q&A. So if you have a question during the session, um, please write it in the chat and we will try to get through as many questions as we can. So first we'll talk about the LGO network. The LGO program is our two year dual degree in which you earn an MBA and a master's of science and engineering in one of eight engineering disciplines. You're a full student of the MIT Sloan community and a full MIT engineering student. At LGO, we have our own dedicated program staff for student services, career network, financing, and action learning. We also work with over 20 partner companies and each student is guaranteed a six month research-based internship in addition to a generous fellowship. So next we'll talk about our sample curriculum. We have a full sample curriculum and program timeline on our website on the academics page, but here's just a snapshot of the first two semesters. So as you can see by the color coding, each of our colors represent engineering, LGO, and Sloan classes, and you'll be taking a mix of each class of, of each of the classes during each semester. Um, the summer semester is the LGO summer core, where students take special classes as a cohort designed by the LGO program. Then in the fall semester, LGO students join the MBA program and complete the MBA core, where LGOs are placed on a slow Sloan core team, and LGOs also begin taking their engineering classes during that first fall semester. Um, so next, I'll quickly go through each of our eight engineering departments. You can find more information on our website, including specific research areas within each department. And you're also encouraged to choose your engineering discipline based on your background, your professional interests, and your research goals. So if you have any specific questions about your particular engineering fit and where you would be most competitive, um, please email us at lgo at mit.edu and we're happy to help you find the best fit based on your background and your interests. So first we'll start with Aero Astro and, I, and I'm not gonna read the whole slide again. There's um, lots of information on our website, but just some of the highlights. So Aero Astro, um, they're looking for a, a bachelor's degree in any science or engineering discipline um, and really defined research area, research interests in line with the Aero Astro uh, research areas, which are on our website. Um, previous pr project work in Aero Astro is recommended. So an internship, school project or work experience um, and this department in particular strongly encourages you to have a former professor write the technical letter of recommendation. Next, we have biological engineering. Um, and so this department is looking for a really kind of specific profile. They're looking for a bachelor's degree in biological engineering or a very similar major um, with demonstrated ability to manage graduate coursework in biological engineering. They're really looking for students who have experience modeling biological processes um, and prior bioengineering or pharmaceutical lab experience is also a plus. So this is one of our smaller departments, but um, you know, again, they're looking for kind of a specific profile. Next, we have chemical engineering. Also one of our smaller departments, they're a very rigorous department um, and they're really looking for students with a degree in chemical engineering or a similar major. Uh, they like to see um, students that have experience in the biotech industry and um, they're looking for a really strong academic background in chemical engineering with top grades. Next, we have the civil and environmental engineering department. Um, this department has a bit of flexibility and accepts a number of different backgrounds. So any bachelor's degree in science or engineering could be a fit for this department. Um, they're looking for a stated interest in civil engineering or in one of LGO CEE research areas, which again are on our website. 
Um, previous work experience in the applicant's defined area is not required. So again, this, this department is a bit more flexible and lots of students who are interested in data analytics um, often find a fit within the supply chain track. So we'll talk a little bit about this um, when we talk about the ORC department, but um, this could be a good fit if you're interested in, in data analytics. Next, we have the electrical engineering and computer science department. Um, and this department is really looking for um, students with a degree in um, science or engineering with a significant knowledge of electrical engineering or computer science and defined research interests which are in line with the department research areas. Um, they're also looking for previous work experience in an industrial setting. Um, that's sort of ideal for them. So if you're interested in just learning coding, but you have no background, this might not be the best department for you. But something that's great about MIT is that it's quite flexible. So even if this isn't your chosen engineering department, you can often take um, some electives outside of your engineering discipline. So you can still sort of cross register in other departments. Next, we have mechanical engineering, which is our largest department at LGO. Um, they're looking for a bachelor's degree in science or engineering. This is the one department that has a prerequisite um, requirement. So they, they're looking for four classes in particular. Um, if you're missing one of the classes that they require, often applicants have taken these classes online, one or two classes that they're missing. So if you have any questions about the prerequisite courses, again, feel free to email us and we're happy to point you in the right direction for um, you know, taking those classes online. Next, we have the nuclear science and engineering department. This is our um, newest department. We just enrolled our first two students last, this past summer. Um, and so, you know, again, we're still sort of building this department, but they're, they're a little bit flexible. They're looking for a previous degree with a strong academic background and, and some sort of STEM degree. Um, they're looking, uh, you don't have to have a nuclear science background to apply. Um, students with a background or interest in energy are often a really good fit for this department. And finally, we have the Operations Research Center. Um, and so this, this department is a bit more specific in what they're looking for. So they're really looking for a bachelor's degree with a strong academic record in a STEM field um, with extensive undergraduate level coursework in math. So we've had candidates be successful in this department with a background in math, in statistics, in physics, and industrial engineering, of course, depending on what math you've taken, but they're looking for really top grades and they tend to select um, just a few students each year for the LGO program. So if you're really interested in data analytics and optimization, again, you should also check out the civil and environmental engineering department within the supply chain track. Um, they have a bit more flexibility and they have the ability to um, admit more students than ORC. So I'd encourage you to check out both of those departments. And again, feel free to reach out to us if you have questions about your specific fit. So before we jump into the student panel, I'd like to just talk about application deadlines. So we recently opened our application for the class of 2024. Um, and at LGO, we have two application deadlines. Round one is September 28th and round two is December 1st. So with that, I'd like to move into our student panel. I would like to first have our students just introduce themselves. You could share your name, your engineering department, and what you were doing before coming to LGO. That would be really helpful. Um, why don't we start with Christina, Dan, and then Lauren. Sure. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Christina. I am in the electrical engineering and computer science department. I'm a second year LGO right now. Uh, prior to LGO, I was working as a cybersecurity consultant at PwC for several years, so I was working on kind of large-scale digital transformation projects, um, and my major in undergrad was chemical engineering. Uh, I think I'm next. Uh, Dan Borjic, I'm Aero Astro. Um, I absolutely love LGO. I uh, was a helicopter pilot in the Army before LGO. And um, I am currently on internship at a one of the partner companies that's a private equity firm. And the person behind me is also an LGO, who is my boss. And then her boss is also an LGO. So it's just a big LGO family over here. 
Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Sikirka. I am also at LGO 2022 uh, in civil and environmental. So uh, as Pam mentioned, I was one of the people who was interested in ORC and then decided to go supply chain within civil and I'm really loving it. Uh, I'm a chemical engineering undergrad with almost eight years at ExxonMobil doing very uh, traditional chemical engineering roles and decided I would like to pivot into healthcare and work more on the industrial engineering supply chain side. Um, and for my internship, I'm working at Boston Scientific. So loving LGO, loving the people. And so far it has helped me like 100% knock it out of the park with all the um, both technical and industry transitions I was looking to do in grad school. Perfect, thanks guys. Um, so why don't we start at the beginning of your LGO experience um, with the LGO summer core. So if you guys could talk about you know, some of your favorite memories and the classes from the LGO Summer Core. Not everybody at once, I'll, I'll start. Um, so my, my uh, favorite memory from the LGO Summer Core was that we all uh, dressed in ridiculous outfits on the first day of class. And I love looking back on those photos. We all wore shorts because we were on Zoom. Uh, it was during the pandemic, obviously. So we were like suits or blazers up top and then uh, running shorts or some other goofy bottoms. And it was as for Zoom, uh, very formal wear. And it was a nice collection of really embarrassing photos that we'll cherish for a long time. Uh, and then in terms of favorite class, I really liked the uh, data science and stats class that we took uh, because coming from military background and then I had a mechanical engineering undergrad. I had had exposure to any of that. And it might be pretty introductory for people that do have exposure to that, but it's also a really good opportunity to teach your classmates and share knowledge and best practices across industries. And all of our professors are like on the cutting edge of the latest research. So they're able to share those experiences with you. And that was a really um, valuable thing that I reflect back on regularly. Yeah, I think uh, similarly to Dan, I really like the classes. Um, I don't like Sean Willems and in, uh, intro to um, operations management was definitely my favorite person to learn from. But as far as content goes, I think we kind of take three main engineering classes, the statistics one day I was talking about an optimization one and then operations management. And revisiting that material uh, after, I think Dan and I similarly were both out of school for a while before going back to grad school. I totally understand why now, because when you get into your engineering classes, like I would have done terribly in those without getting that foundation in uh, over the summer. And I think just the fact that we take it, let's say, you know, about 50 of us all in the class, you take all those classes together. So it's, it's really hard, but you're helping support each other and get to like build those relationships and having people to study with. So you don't have to pick between having fun and like learning. You can have fun while learning with your peers. Um, and so for me, that was really what made it special is instantly we had a community and like undergrad engineering does, you uh, find something to struggle through together and it really helps build up the friendship. Um, this is good. Like you're going to MIT for grad school. Like you want it to be uh, a challenging, right? And maybe just as an example of that, um, that it can be challenging and fun. My favorite memory, I think, from the summer is at the end of the summer, we do like as part of the optimization class, we do a final project. Um, and my core team decided to do it on how to um, best route through New Zealand on a Lord of the Rings trip. And we were optimizing to make sure that we all had enough fun. And so our entire presentation was like littered with Lord of the Rings memes, um, which two of us were really into, um, myself included. So that was a blast. And then maybe just on the other side for the summer. So there is a lot of like technical content um, that we go through, but there's also a leadership course that we take um, with another kind of world renowned professor. Uh, and I think that my concern coming in was that, you know, with Zoom, it might not be as easy to have a discussion, but I think that uh, everyone was really engaged in that. And I had never had, uh, uh, kind of such a leadership course taking so many engineering courses in undergrad um, and there was like a real kind of practical element to um, that leadership course and I uh, just think that it was a nice kind of refreshing um, and alternative perspective outside of the engineering courses. Great thank you. 
Um, so Lauren touched on this already, but I'd love to hear how you all selected your engineering department, um, particularly if you were deciding between two or if you studied something different from undergrad, um, or maybe if you just, you know, you studied the same discipline and so it was a natural choice, but would love to hear more about how you chose your engineering discipline. I can maybe start with that because I did do a switch. Um, so I majored in chemical engineering in undergrad and then immediately afterwards uh, was not working in chemical engineering at all. So it was doing, as I mentioned, kind of on that cybersecurity side. And so I think it was really my professional experience that had fueled which department I was applying to. Um, however, I do just want to reiterate, especially for the EECS department, um, electrical engineering, computer science, there are opportunities to take these classes, even if you don't apply to this department. And so I just really, I, I've seen a lot of people, I think Dan mentioned it in the chat as well. Um, a lot of people get to take some EECS classes, even if you're not in the department. But for me, I was really interested in kind of continuing to pursue a career in kind of a digital or technology profession. And so that was what kind of fueled my EECS um, uh, application. And then also talking to current students, just understanding what kind of courses you get to take in EECS was uh, the reason that I was applying to that one. Yeah, I'd say similarly, um, I knew I wanted to leave chemical engineering. Um, I just, in all parts of the business, you're constantly talking about chemistry, and I realized uh, I liked math, uh, but didn't love chemistry. I uh, would probably redo undergrad if I could, but anyway, so uh, I realized applied math was kind of more where I was interested, but I hadn't coded since undergrad, so EECS was kind of out unless I wanted to spend like a lot of time learning to code, and I like people, so the solo work of programming didn't fit my uh, extremely extroverted personality, let's say. Um, so that led me with ORC and civil. And through learning about it, ORC is also, it, it's amazing program, but it is to a lot of like data analytics. And I wanted to be more on the like applied side where you're looking at a problem, but you're having to go network with the people at a company still. And so industrial engineering is basically what I realized I was describing. And while MIT doesn't have an industrial department, we have all of the classes that would make up one within civil and environmental. So that's basically what um, led me there. And I think for most of us who go that path, it's honestly just figuring out how to explain that in interviews, because uh, we're not like, I don't know anything about soil or structure still. Um, so I'd say that's the only caveat there is articulating like, why civil because you're it, it's a dutch industrial engineering um but it also is very i would say liberal in where what classes you can take and, and if you have questions just ask students in the department and we can send you class lists of approved things so my first hot take on this is that i chose aero astro because my wife wouldn't let me go be an astronaut so the second coolest thing is being able to tell people you're a rocket scientist from MIT, even though I'm not really a rocket scientist, but people from the Aero Astro department do do that, which is pretty sweet. Uh, but in all actuality, uh, I really liked the Aero Astro department because it aligned with my interests. Uh, I come in being a helicopter pilot previously. Um, I'm just have always been fascinated in aviation things. And I want to go work in the urban air mobility space um, long term and make air taxis a reality. And uh, the Aero Astro department is very well aligned with those interests. And Dan, you might have mentioned this, but what was your undergrad and undergrad major? Uh, I was mechanical, so I did make a pivot as well. Perfect. Great. And so since this is an engineering uh, webinar, I'd like to talk through what were some of your favorite engineering classes that you've taken so far while at MIT? Sure, I can start again. So I have really enjoyed some of the engineering classes I've taken. So, so far I've taken artificial intelligence and then um, this intro to machine learning class, which also had kind of a subject, a course specific subject. So I took the sustainability for machine learning class as well. And then also this uh, data visualization course. And I think that might be my favorite of all that I've taken here. Um, it was with uh, this professor, his name is Arvind, super engaging. We didn't do it on Zoom. We did it on this other platform called OEA. And so you can actually, like there's live reactions from the students in the class. And so like every time he was pulling up slides, we would get to like clap or we would get to like boo if we saw a bad visualization. So it was an absolute blast um, in terms of like the professor.
professor engagement. And um, the course itself, you are using D3JS, which is a, a language that I wasn't familiar with, or really a package that I wasn't familiar with. Um, but it's how kind of all these websites make um, SVGs and these like PNG elements. And uh, so the class was actually like building whatever visualization you wanted. So um, the project that my group worked on, which was of course with other LGOs, only LGOs, um, we were working on kind of visualizing colors. And so had like just the best time coding this new language that we didn't know. Um, and so it was like very challenging because, you know, learning a new language is tough, but it was, yeah, it was by far the best class. I would definitely recommend it. If anyone's interested, reach out and I can, I can give you the course number. <laughs> and I have uh, two, one is intro to deep learning and the other one is fundamentals of systems engineering. So intro to deep learning is during IAP, which is the month of January. And it was a two week class and it assumes no previous knowledge of deep learning, but it gives you, and it's tailored for all skill sets. So if you're an ex super experienced coder and like have tons of background CS, et cetera, like this class is still for you. Um, and it's really well designed. Like the very first day, uh, President Obama welcomed us to class via a deep fake that the professors had coded. Um, and then they talk through what the capabilities, limitations, of deep learning are. They go through and you actually code these um, in TensorFlow and practice designing. And there's all these different labs uh, and it's really well structured. And it is made such that you can, like somebody with no previous knowledge or somebody that's super experienced still gets a ton out of the experience. And I, I really enjoyed that class. And then the other one is uh, 16842 Fundamentals of System Engineering. And that class uh, was through the Aero Astro Department. And we followed along with the NASA Big Idea Design Challenge. And this year's challenge was mitigating the effects of moon dust abrasion on different objects. And they NASA crowdsources ideas to try to solve things that they're currently working on. And my group um, worked through the systems design process on how to create a better spacesuit that would mitigate those effects of moon dust abrasion. And we walked through the whole competition. We didn't actually compete in it, but did all the deliverables in class and thought through the whole process. And it was a really um, interesting process that actually what you're seeing behind me on this board with all those sticky notes is something I learned in that class in terms of mapping what the current process is and figuring out how, what the future state looks like and um, generating ideas and just how to think about problems. I feel like I'm gonna have to go learn about that class then. It sounds like a great skill set to have. Um, for me, I'd say I have a most favorite and then a, uh, what I found to be the most like useful in my everyday life. Um, so the coolest class I took in civil was called um, Startup Sustainable Tech. And um, it is basically if you're interested in startups, you can take classes on the management side. But this one's a new civil class that a civil professor who's done his own startup teaches. And so it's more if you're on the person inventing the technology. So you'd be getting like a patent and how early in your like research or ideation do you help determine if your idea is patentable so you don't like waste a bunch of time making something that's already been invented and then talking about market need but because it was on sustainability every we learned the same principles you would in a normal startup class but everything was uh the cases we did were all on companies doing sustainable fashion sustainable energy so it's really cool because you're getting to learn about like the environmental part of cee while also learning about inventing things um which i thought was a really unique spin on it and for anyone working to pull sustainability into their startup ideas, you were also building that. So it's kind of like a two for one uh, class and it counted towards their engineering credits. Um, and then my useful, my everyday life is 1.260. It's called logistics systems. It's just like your bread and butter supply chain class. Um, but it taught you how to do forecasting, the different types of forecasting, all the way through to distribution networks whenever you're ordering. Um, way more advanced um, model policies for inventory than we learn in operations management and then how like supply chain planning happens. So at the end of the semester, like you could go drop into a supply chain internship or like apply for your roles full time in supply chain and fully understand the language and be able to show up and, and represent well in both an interview and a job. So as far as just someone looking who wasn't in supply chain to go into supply chain for one engineering class to kind of give you everything you need to successfully do that, I thought it's incredibly useful. 
Great, thank you. Um, and so we often get asked sort of the breakdown between engineering and Sloan. So I'd love to hear how you all have been involved in the engineering side of the dual degree, either through extracurriculars or just through the engineering community in general. I think one of my favorite things about LGO is that it really is a choose your own adventure. There's a baseline number of core requirements that you do have to satisfy, but that's the case with every degree. Um, but it does have a tremendous amount of flexibility built in and you can index way heavier on the engineering or the Sloan side of things. Um, in terms of my commitments to the engineering side of the house, it has been uh, really fun to be plugged in um, with the Aero Astro department just to learn about people's research. Um, like I haven't directly been involved in a lab, but there are certainly Aero Astros that do do that. But learning about the cutting edge research, like my advisor worked on a project where they're shooting rockets out of an F-18 and then these mini drones swarm out of the rocket. Um, and it's just like really like sci-fi type stuff and like learning about how you actually do that in reality rather than just like in a movie is really incredible. And uh, that's a day on a daily basis at, at MIT if, if, if that's what you're seeking. Uh, yeah, I think two things come to mind for me. The first is um, really you kind of get uh, incorporated in, or introduced into the um, you know, engineering department, that community through some of your engineering classes, or at least that's been my experience. So um, kind of like working with um, other graduate students, even undergrads, um, PhD students throughout your engineering courses, uh, you start to like build up that community. So as a result of like going to all these office hours for one of my engineering classes, like I became friends with some of these other PhD students. And um, now there's like a a very nerdy book club um, that we like all go and it's not even books we just like read papers and talk about them so I think that there are like informal ways that you can get involved in the engineering community um, and then a second way is kind of that research component so I'm talking with uh, a professor now so I haven't actually started the research but kind of you can informally speak to professors if those you know you've taken their class or not um, about a project not super even outside of the ECS department so he's actually in the civil department so I'm just kind of doing a project for him and maybe doing kind of a, a research assistant position so if that those opportunities are out there um, if you're interested I'm happy to talk about it um, as I start that and I would say uh, when Dan's talking about choose your own adventure I am leaning pretty heavily into the leadership development and business side of things um, but I have socially engaged with the engineering department outside of my classes. So, you know, it's hard for everyone during COVID. And since those students are normally here for much longer than the two-year MBA students are, they had like a really strong community and were really working to uh, safely see each other so that they would have like virtual board game nights, um, which is my kind of nerdy. So I enjoyed uh, meeting the other civil students, getting to do some of that. We had like a virtual running group where we'd all sign up for the same run and the civil department actually reimbursed us for the fees. So that was uh, a lot of fun. And then I'm in uh, student government in the Sloan Senate, but also am a tie to the Graduate Student Council. So for things like if MIT is trying to be better at diversity, equity, and inclusion, you're that tie point helping uh, compare how all the departments are addressing things of that nature and make sure we're using like a common approach and holding each other accountable. So I get to see some of the um, political administrative side of the engineering department as well. I also, uh, I'd like to just briefly touch on two uh, LGOs in our class to give you another flavor of some other perspectives. Um, there, one LGO, Philip Simons, uh, is a PhD candidate, or now is a, holds a PhD and is an LGO as well. Uh, and he did his PhD through MIT and then did the LGO program in conjunction with that. And like, obviously did very deep research as in associated with that. And then uh, Andrew Trzanski is the president or like general management manager of uh, MIT Driverless, which is the autonomous vehicle um, project or club on MIT's campus. And like he's leading that entire project and it's super technical in nature. Um, so that like those are just some anecdotes of other possibilities or things out there uh, along this, the lines of this question. 
Yeah. And you can take up the three classes outside of uh, Sloan. And a lot of students will use to take like classes at like Harvard Kennedy and stuff. But actually one of our peers, Felipe, who's I believe a Mechie, but really loves ORC, is using all three of his extra classes uh, to take ORC classes. Uh, so he's just crushing it with the workload, but that's what he wanted to do and what he's passionate about. So yeah, you can definitely index more towards the engineering side if you want to as well. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, that really shows, I think, the flexibility of the program and just MIT in general. Um, so Dan touched on this a bit in the chat, but would love to hear more on taking engineering classes outside of your engineering discipline. So just how the process works, how was your experience, or you know, are there classes that you're planning to take outside of your engineering discipline? I took uh, Principles of Autonomy and Decision Making, which is an introductory autonomous or uh, autonomous agent course, if you will, like how to program a underwater vehicle with a goal in mind and how that works or how you find, uh, do a tree search to find a file inside of a computer, et cetera. Um, and it was taught through the ECS department. It aligned with my research interests of wanting to work in urban air mobility and employing autonomous agents in the real world. Um, just bounced it off my advisor and he said, absolutely. And I went and took the class. Uh, I, and then the second part of that, like, are there other classes that I'd be interested in? Uh, I would be an MIT grad student indefinitely uh, because there's so much stuff that I want to do and I enjoy it so much. Uh, like it's a fantastic quality of life. Um, so Pam, I'm really asking, can I stay on for an extra three or four years? Um, thanks. We would love to have you. Um, yeah, I, so I'm interested in uh, going into healthcare, uh, as I mentioned, and one of the program requirements of LGO is to take a, I believe it's called a product design class. Um, and you can either take that in the MBA side, which is like, so you want to be like a PM or something that's more like a, how to make things, how to assess the market need and prototype, or you can take it on the engineering side where they have classes where you're like actually designing something like you would your senior design project in undergrad. And so I plan to take, um, one of the two medical device classes, one's in, um, the bio, Mechie department and, and one's in the Mechie department. I have to pick which one still, but my intent is to use that to meet the design requirement um, to optimize for my goal of learning as much about healthcare as possible uh, while here. Yeah, and just on the point about taking classes kind of outside of your department. So uh, actually both semesters, so fall and spring semester, I took courses in um, the civil department that were like related to ECS. So for example, um, in the fall semester, there is an implementing implementing and orchestrating software systems. Um, and I honestly like had not seen that class. Another LGO was like, the professors are awesome here. Like you get to learn essentially like, how are you building like a web app from start to finish, um, kind of going through like multiple tiers of how you host it and all these different things. And we actually use that to um, help a nonprofit kind of develop a, an application that would perform kind of a sorting and matching algorithm. And so um, that like had not anticipated taking that class, which was pulled in from another LGO. And the process was super simple. I emailed my advisor, kind of like outlined what the class was about and what we would be covering. The content was very clearly like valuable from uh, my research in interest perspective and from like an EECS content wise perspective. Um, so that was like really simple. Um, same, same scenario in the spring. Um, so that machine learning for sustainability course was um, actually married with a core six course. So actually there, you know, there are some courses that have that cross departments. Um, so again, super simple process of just chatting with your advisor. And I think that um, just to note about like the kind of engagement with your advisor, uh, to Dan's point about choose your own adventure, they want you to pick the classes that you're interested in, right? So there are requirements, but you really get to kind of peruse the course catalog across departments and see like what you what you're really interested in. So I would I would definitely recommend that. Great. So within the last few minutes here, um, we will answer some of the Q&A live. So the first question we have is, um, how do you compare your workload to MBA students? Are there any trade-offs between LGO and MBA that you didn't expect? And do we want to 
each just answer like one one of us speak per question so we can get sure, more yeah. questions yeah that's okay. a great idea then i'll let you go because you came off me uh I, I think to answer this like it really depends on the person and i have yet to meet an lgo who didn't love taking on way more than they can handle that's just like by nature what a lot of lgos or all lgos are like um so I would say we're all involved in a ton of stuff, but it's all stuff that we really want to do. And yes, like the workload is obviously slightly higher because you do have some engineering requirements, you're taking more classes, et cetera, but it's also like very, very fun, super rewarding, and it's really well-structured and there's a ton of help. And like, it's a very collaborative network that everybody's assisting one another with like that principles of autonomy and decision-making class. I was working every, every day, on homework with other LGOs to get through that class together and like learn. And I chose to take that class because I, I wanted a nice challenge and I didn't need to, but it, it was great. And those are the types of things that you get at LGO that you would not have just in a traditional MBA. Great. Another question is before coming to LGO, did you compare this program with other uh, dual degrees out there, other top business programs? And if so, what made you decide to come to LGO? And this might be a question for the whole group. Yeah, I'm happy to start here. So I, I, I was comparing, um, you know, kind of LGO to other departments. I think one of the things that I overwhelmingly found was that, and this was definitely one of the deciding factors for me, was that the uh, program support that you get at LGO is really unmatched across across any top business school. Um, I think also the ability to do this in two years uh, is something that is exceedingly beneficial and and quite a draw for me when I was applying. Uh, the for other business schools that I saw, there was the ability to do kind of a master's in conjunction with your MBA, but the there was no actual like orchestrated support. And so um, this is an entirely seamless process. Um, everybody knows about this. You know, the, the LGO program is kind of a huge component to um, the MBA experience because, you know, MBAs, we interact with them through the fall semester and throughout our entire time here. So I would say that definitely the support and the program office was a huge draw for me. Um, and then also the engagement with the partner company Companies is something that I have not seen um, at across other um, top business schools. The you know we start talking with partner companies starting from our first summer and kind of throughout our entire time here throughout the internship process. And so it's just a really unique opportunity. Um, I think that the even going forward, you know, there'll be even more engagement with the partner companies when we can get back in person. Um, but even with the virtual component, we have been very engaged with them. So I think that the program office engagement with the partner companies, the ability to do this in two years, it was just kind of the whole package. Yeah, I, I picked LGO over several top business schools. Uh, I did not look at any other dual degree programs, but LGO was my top choice because it's at the intersection of business and technology, very well-structured program. And I love the people inside of it. And the quality of relationships was unmatched, like it, obviously smaller in quantity, but the quality is, is unmatched relative to anywhere else I was looking. Yeah, and I similarly uh, to Dan, I didn't apply to other dual degree programs because they all, everyone I found took three years and I just wasn't willing to do that. Um, but uh, I love this program and I would say like, you know, a lot, at least at this point for me personally, I focused on just applying in getting in and then once I got in I worried about the like where I would accept part but I think once you know who your cohort is to talk to like for me it became so obvious and I, I hate that like saying it's about people like sounds like such an unanalytical answer for us analytical folk but like truly 50 people who are both passionate about technical and business is such a rare find that you just meet them and you're like oh okay this is home uh, and then the decision was really easy at that point. Awesome. So we are almost out of time, but I have one more question. Um, because we've been cut, you know, shut down with COVID and we haven't been able to have visitors on campus, could you all describe um, the culture within the MIT LGO community and what's that what that's like? Um, well, I would say our class has very similar constraints, but I think it's a testament to the LGO culture that despite having very little things we could do in person, we have an amazingly strong culture. Um, 
the best anecdote I can give is over the summer when things were really hard because we weren't working together doing homework to see that other people were taking a long time. We on Slack made a struggle bus channel as a joke, but then instead of just the people struggling joining the channel, the people who weren't struggling joined it and started hosting tutoring sessions and like jumping on calls literally like 8 p.m. on a Friday being like, oh, let me help you with this Python thing because I want you to enjoy your weekend too. Um, so the fact that we didn't know each other, but like that well yet, but just by selection, we're willing to help and lift each other up, I think is an amazing testament uh, to the culture. And now, uh, like we all know each other's names, who has SOs, what their SOs do, et cetera. And that's all despite like COVID. So incredibly supportive uh, and um, helpful and very humble. Uh, last summer, I've required a lot of assistance from fellow LGOs to get me to this point. We'll just put it at that point. But uh, one specific anecdote to, to that is the Python class. I didn't even know what Python was before I started the program. Like that's how not good at technical stuff I was. And uh, Elizabeth, one of our classmates, tutored me through the whole summer and like walked me through how to code and like her thought process. She's incredible at coding. And then I took a, a introductory or that uh, autonomous AI class that I, I told you all about and uh, knocked out of the park. And that was only possible because Elizabeth walked me through that. And like, that's an everyday occurrence at LGO. And like, she never asked for anything in return. And like, we all help one another out and would do anything for, for each other. And I'll just I'll add a quick note. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to add, say that on a social side, um, it was crazy that, I mean, almost none of us had met by the time we had all gotten to campus in the fall. Um, but because of like our WhatsApp chat, I felt like I knew everybody, like everyone had shown their personalities and like the memes that were coming through that chat actually made me like laugh out loud during class or after class. Um, and there was one time where uh, I, we had a really long day of Zoom. I was like, pinging people on my core team and um it turned out we were all like laying on the floor like I think everyone was laying on the floor because we were all just tired um and it was just like the best like really we developed a community despite being virtual it was wonderful and when Dan said we all help each other out like Luke replaced the starter in my car so I didn't have to go to a mechanic because we're not working right now while I was in zoom class because he didn't want me to watch him because it made him nervous um but yeah so like I knew him for two months so this guy's replacing the starter in my car for me so uh just truly amazing quality humans that's awesome those are such good examples um, so we are out of time, but I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. I hope this session was helpful. Um, and we do have a number of upcoming virtual events, including preview day in September and an application tips webinar, um, which I encourage you to register for online. So thank you so much, everybody. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.